الحمد لله خلق الإنسان في أحسن تقويم. All praise is due to Allah. He created humans in the best shape. And he granted humans many privileges over other creatures. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger who guided all people to the straightest path. May Allah grant commendation and protection to his messenger as well as to the messenger's family and companions. People of Iman, when you observe taqwa of Allah by fulfilling his commands and avoiding his prohibitions, Allah will grant you a criterion by which you can distinguish right from wrong. Allah, the most exalted, created humans with an intact, innate disposition. It likes things that are good, virtuous, and wholesome, and it dislikes things that are bad, repugnant, and unwholesome. He gave people an innate disposition that is prepared to accept good things, sincerely devote all worship to Allah alone, and draw near to Allah. The religion of Islam is the religion of that sound in a disposition. The creator of that disposition is the same one who sent down the religion containing the directives that he prescribed. And he does not accept any religion besides that one from anyone. He said, therefore you are to direct yourself towards the path of sincerely devoting all worship to Allah alone and not devoting any worship whatsoever to anyone besides Him. You must adhere to that innate disposition which Allah created all people with and there must not be any change in what Allah has created. That is the correct religion, but most people do not realize this. Servants of Allah, despite the variations among people in their paths and their points of reference, they all still agree on preserving their human nature in order for their existence to continue and their lives to be in order. In the vast majority of cases, the disposition that Allah put within all people does not accept obscene, anomalous inclinations as being part of human nature. The anomalous is not something standard, rather it is something deviant, and consideration regarding what is part of human nature is not to be given to individuals who have harmful influences corrupt their innate disposition and wipe out its insight such that their understandings become inverted and they see truth as falsehood, falsehood as truth, good as bad, bad as good, permissible as prohibited, and prohibited as permissible. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that Allah's messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, had said, people's hearts will be subjected to trials one after the next, just as a reed mat, just as a reed mat is woven together one strand after the next. Whenever any heart takes them in, a black spot will be placed within it, and whenever any heart fends them off, a white spot will be placed within it. Thus, people's hearts would become two types, one like a smooth white rock, and which remains unharmed by trials and strife for as long as the heavens and earth remain, and another that is black, gloomy, and like an overturned vessel. It does not recognize right or disapprove of wrong. All it accepts is what suits its own disobedient inclinations. Servants of Allah, worshipping Allah alone and not directing worship to other than Him is part of the innate disposition that all humans have been created with. Humans are born with that disposition to not worship other than Allah, which is the disposition of worshipping Allah alone. This is the disposition of submitting to Allah and Islam. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, every child is born with the innate disposition to accept the truth from Allah. In addition, the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, stated that Allah said, I created all of my servants with the innate disposition to worship me alone. However, the shayateen, individuals who are rebelliously disobedient towards Allah, influenced them to forsake that true religion which they are supposed to follow. When that innate disposition of Allah's servants is overturned and their minds are not used in the correct manner, they end up going astray. They end up 
ascribing partners to their Lord. And they may end up worshipping idols, stones, trees, stars, shayateen, animals, and other objects and deities that are worshipped without right. In addition to the innate disposition of such people becoming corrupted and their lack of sound guidance from Allah, they persist in their falsehood and they prefer rejecting the truth from Allah over accepting it. Recognizing the truth from Allah is something ingrained within all people. However, when that innate disposition becomes overturned, some people arrogantly try to deny it. They seek to overpower their own intellects and they oppose basic things that can be readily understood with common sense. Thus, they deny Allah's existence and they also deny that this creation has one who created it and regulates it, even though everything throughout creation contains evidences establishing his existence, lordship, uniqueness, and limitless ability. At times of adversity and distress, the innate disposition of humans awakens and it singles out its Lord as the one to be worshipped. Allah the Most Exalted said, Yet when you encounter life-threatening adversity while at sea, you forget all about the deities you worship besides Allah. However, when that innate disposition is upended, in the case of some among the ignorant who ascribe to Islam, they forsake calling upon Allah during trials and difficulties, and they instead seek deliverance from people who they think are pious or righteous. In that way, they actually do something worse than idolaters at the time of Islam's advent, who worship their idols in general, but would call upon Allah alone for salvation during major crises and forget all about their other deities. Allah the Most Majestic said, And when they board a ship, they invoke Allah and devote their worship to Him alone. But when He brings them, but when He brings them to land safely, they give a share of their worship to others. My dear brothers, Allah created males and females with traits that are specific to each and that distinguish each one from the other. Allah the Most Exalted said, and the male is not the same as the female. This is the way Allah has made them and there is to be no alteration in what Allah created. Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection stated that Allah has expelled from his mercy males who try to resemble females and females who try to resemble males. However, when innate human nature becomes upended, there are some among young men whose traits change and they make deliberate efforts to be feminine. They dress in a feminine mode, speak in a higher tone, laugh in a flirty manner, walk with a distinctively effeminate gait and make their appearance include what does not indicate that they are males. Due to that appearance, an observer would be confused as to whether the person observed is actually male or female. The same concept applies to young women as well. There are some among them whose traits change. They try to get rid of their feminine features, and they try to embody characteristics that distinguish males in their speech, appearance, clothing, and other features. Another part of Allah's matchless wisdom is that he created the male and female genders and made each one inclined towards the other. Marriage in Islam is a prescribed bond that brings a male and female together. It is something that is part of human nature and it allows the two spouses to be intimate with each other in ways that are permissible according to Islam's teachings. However, when innate human nature becomes reversed, there are some among young men who are able to marry, but then avoid doing so and justify that by saying that marriage is a commitment, it is a responsibility, and it can have various liabilities. There are also some young women. There are also some among young women who refuse marriage due to believing that it restricts a woman's freedom and gives others control of her. Those young men and women who choose to stay single, and we implore Allah to grant them His guidance, may even choose to be involved in impermissible relationships to satisfy their desires. When innate human nature becomes reversed, major sins are perpetrated, and people involve themselves 
and various immoralities and blameworthy practices. Those include acts like the ones perpetrated by the people to whom the prophet Lut was sent, but they rejected his teachings. It includes sexual acts between males and females. It, it includes sexual acts between males and males or females and females. It includes what some people may call wife switching. It also includes what some may call same gender marriage, which is in fact not marriage in reality. Rather, it is an immoral abnormal. It is an immoral abnormality, a disfiguration of the innate disposition that Allah created people with and an alteration of the human nature that Allah put within people. When a person's natural innate disposition becomes altered, he lives a lowly life that lacks true worth, giving no mind to how low his morals sink. Additionally, during recent times, various Muslim societies have been tested with influences aiming to demolish family ties as well as the bonds that hold society together properly. That includes women seeking separation from their husbands for trifling reasons or perhaps no legitimate reason at all. And claiming that is what will let the women be free without any restrictions. We implore Allah to grant guidance to such women. Even worse than what preceded is that there may, there may be those of them who end up separating from their husbands and are then influenced by shaitan, any rebelliously disobedient individual towards Allah, such that they become involved in relationships of an impermissible nature. That may happen due to being affected by misconceptions or poisonous thoughts that end up producing terrible results and many regrets. Servants of Allah, part of Innate human disposition is protectiveness of all that is exclusively under one's care and detesting for Allah to be disobeyed concerning it. A man whose innate nature is intact has that within himself when it comes to his family and his dignity. An authentic hadith mentions that it reached Allah's messenger and may Allah grant him commendation and protection. That Sa'd ibn Ubadah had said, If I saw another man with my wife, I would hit him with a sword and I would not do that with the dull part of the blade. Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said to the companions present, Do you find it remarkable to know the extent of Sa'd's protectiveness of what is under his care and his dislike for, for, and his dislike for Allah to be disobeyed concerning it? I swear by Allah that I have an extent of that even greater than Sa'd and that Allah has an extent of it even greater than me. However, when a man's innate disposition is overturned, he neglects his duties. Thus, he does not provide the guardianship and care for which he is responsible, and he leaves those under his care unprotected and has no concern whether Allah is disobeyed concerning them. He would see impermissible things being done with members of his household, yet not even merely frown in disapproval. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, Three types of people whom Allah will bar from Jannah are someone who is addicted to intoxicants, someone who mistreats his parents, and someone who approves of immorality being committed with his family members. In addition, when the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, took a pledge of Islam from women, one of the things stipulated was that they not commit adultery. Upon hearing that Hind bint Utba inquired in astonishment, Messenger of Allah, would a free woman commit adultery? In other words, is it conceivable that a free and chaste woman would commit adultery although she knows that it is something terribly wrong and blameworthy? However, when a woman's innate disposition is overturned, she neglects her chastity, sells her integrity, and pollutes her dignity. Thus, she neither gives consideration to morality, nor refrains from being involved in immorality. Servants of Allah, innate shame, chastity, dignity, and integrity are praiseworthy and noble qualities that conform with innate human disposition. A poet from Jahiliya, the era of ignorance prior to Islam, had said about a woman of that time, Words to the effect that when her covering fell and she did not intend for that to happen, she reached for it and hid from us with her hand. In other words, when her head covering unintentionally fell, she reached for it while covering her face with her arm. It should come as no surprise that innate human nature calls women towards chastity, covering, and refraining from displaying their bodies. However, when human 
When innate human nature is upended, there are women who remove from themselves the garment that is their innate sense of shame. Thus, they have no concern for uncovering, exposing, and displaying their beauty and attractive features in the presence of men who are not related to them. A poet from Jahiliya expressed that he diverted his glance from the wife of his neighbor out of his own sense of shame, as well as out of respect for his neighbor's status, rights, and dignity. He said words to the following effect. I divert my glance if my female neighbor appears in my view until her abode conceals her. However, when innate human disposition is upended, a man violates the bounds of the permissible and thus betrays his own neighbor and seeks to harass or harm the women under his neighbor's care. He may even perpetrate what is worse by trying to seduce her to commit adultery. And this is something that the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, mentioned among the most serious of sins. Servants of Allah, purity, both inward and outward, conforms with innate human disposition. It is virtuous to maintain purity of the tongue and speak honorable words. In contrast, it is reprehensible to say foul and foolish things, and those are avoided by dignified individuals who, whose innate disposition is intact. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, Allah indeed detests the individual who says immoral and foul things. However, when innate human disposition is overturned, foul speech is not avoided. Rather, foul and foolish speech becomes acceptable and widespread upon people's tongues without any disapproval. People have the innate disposition to like cleanliness and beauty and to avoid impurities and filth. Islam encourages various prescribed forms of maintaining inner and outward cleanliness. The Prophet may Allah grant commendation and protection mentioned that five things are part of cleanliness that conforms with innate human disposition. Circumcision, removing pubic hair, removing underarm hair, clipping nails, and shortening the mustache. However, when innate human disposition is upended, an individual goes against his own nature regarding such things. For instance, a person may leave nails to grow so long that they collect impurities in addition to their unpleasant appearance. And he may even think that he is doing something that looks good. May Allah bless all of us by the Quran and Sunnah and enable us to glean benefit from all the directives they contain. I say this much and I beseech Allah to forgive myself as well as all of you. All praise is due to Allah who guided us into Islam. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I bear witness that our leader and prophet Muhammad is Allah's chosen prophet and messenger. Dear Muslims, when innate human disposition is protected from adverse influences, it recognizes the truth, inclines towards good things, and remains steadfast towards its Lord. A hadith mentions that on the night when the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, was taken up to the heavens, two cups were brought to him, one with milk and one with wine. He looked at them and took the one with milk. Jibreel then said, All praise is due to Allah who guided you to the sound, innate disposition. Had you taken the wine, your ummah would have been misguided. Anawi, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that Jibreel's statement meant, and Allah knows best, that he chose the sign of Islam and steadfastness. Milk was designated as an indicator of that, since it is something wholesome, pure, consumed easily, and causes no ill effects. As for wine, it is a source of very many unwholesome things and it brings numerous ills in the present and in the end. Servants of Allah, the extent to which the innate disposition that each person has, the extent to which the innate disposition that each person has been created with remains intact 
and has harmful influences averted from it. The extent of that is proportional to how well the individual complies with this religion's directives and how steadfast he is in adhering to them. Opponents of Islam are aware that a Muslim community is one to which the conduct taught by Islam is innate. And it is a community that does not deviate from Islam's teachings and tread paths of misguidance unless innate human disposition becomes distorted within the hearts of the sons of Islam. Once that distortion occurs, nothing is left to prevent individuals from deviant conduct, repugnant actions, and corrupt ideas. Dear Muslims, there are many advocates of rebellion against the pure innate disposition the pure innate human disposition, and some of them spread their call using contemporary media forms. If we want to maintain happiness and proper order in life, it is a must for us to steadfastly adhere to the sound disposition that Allah created us with, and we must beware of letting letting we must beware of letting it become un we must beware of letting it become upended. We must also adhere to the guidance of path that our Lord prescribed for us, and we must not turn away from that. Turning away from it ultimately turns a person's life in this world and the hereafter into misery, confinement, and constant torment. Allah said, if anyone turns away in aversion from my mention, he will certainly have a miserable life, and we will raise him blind on the day of resurrection. In conclusion, we invoke Allah to grant commendation and protection to his worshipping servant and messenger. O oh Allah, we implore you to protect us against all harmful influences. O oh Allah, we beseech you to grant us safety and protection in our lands. O oh Allah, we implore you to grant your guidance to our leader. O oh Allah, you are the one who hears our call. O oh Allah, we implore you to avert from us all adversities, epidemics, and ills, whether apparent or concealed. O oh Allah, we ask this of you for our land and for all lands of those who submit to you in Islam. O oh Allah, we implore you to grant your support to our troops who defend our nation's borders. O oh Allah, we implore you to make our leaders righteous individuals. O oh Allah, God, our leader to all that you love and are pleased with, direct him so that he performs righteous deeds and observes taqwa in all situations. O oh Allah, protect us and grant us the good that lies with you. And all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all creation.